Down the road from Lexington, the first county created after Kentucky became a state was Scott County. In the 1800s, a woman played the pivotal role there as the common law wife of a U.S. vice president, as a farm manager, and as a slave. She's literally been erased. We don't even know where she's buried. We've literally lost the vice president's wife. But because she was enslaved, no one cared. The way I understand Julia Chin is Richard Mentor Johnson, her de facto husband, um, the ninth vice president, um, was away so much, whether it was serving in, in Kentucky politics or in Congress, that the only person really left to manage the plantation was Julia Chin. I mean, it's an amazing story of empowerment when you think about it. She originally had belonged to his mother and father. And when Richard moved out of the house, Julia came with him to act as uh, the housekeeper of his own household. And so that's probably around the time that their relationship started. By 1811, Richard Mentor Johnson and Julia Chen had started a relationship because their first child was born shortly thereafter and then they had another child a few years later. At that time, you know, interracial sex was common in antebellum America, but she would have had um, very little, if any, say in whether or not she wanted to take part in a sexual relationship. So in other words, it might have been impossible for her to say no in that context. And that's something that we all need to remember when we're thinking about the context of slavery. We can't really know Julia's side of the story. We know that Julia Chen read and wrote and that she wrote letters to Richard Mentor Johnson. What's unfortunate is that none of her letters have survived, but Richard in his letters um, to other people references Julia's letters to him. The thing that does make their relationship exceptional is that Richard Mentor Johnson did acknowledge the children that they had together as his children. So they took his last name, um, they inherited property from him, and he liberated them. He never liberated Julia, and we don't know why exactly. Back in those days, Richard Mentor Johnson was a congressman and he lived for six months out of the year in Washington, D.C. So Julia Chen was the manager of his estate in his absence. So when he, he uses this phrase, you must support her authority, he is actually writing that to one of his white employees. So it's a kind of authority by proxy. In, in 1825, Richard M. Johnson hosted a barbecue when General Marquis de Lafayette came through America to visit the various people with whom he had served during the American Revolution. It was a magnificent affair. Thousands of people come together. The women are dressed to the nines. Her daughters are dressed to the nines. They perform on the piano for Lafayette. They sing for the Marquis. And People talk about what an amazing job Julia does. It's not that she does it by herself, but she's able to organize not just the domestic staff at Blue Spring, but she really helps to coordinate all the women throughout the county because it takes everybody. And because Blue Spring hosts, it's really her job to bring everyone together and oversee everything. Choctaw Academy is, that's another big responsibility for Julia in a lot of ways. The, the school was acknowledged all over the United States as, as a really important institution to provide Western style education to the native's children. We have the first federally funded non-missionary, if you will, kind of secular school that was so multiracial. And then in all of that, we have this amazing backstory about um, Julia Chin and, and her children also receiving an education here. Julia and the household staff incur a huge burden or responsibility when Choctaw opens up. They are responsible in so many ways for the day-to-day -day running of that academy. She herself um, has great physician and nursing skills, so when the students fall sick, she's the one who takes care of them. 
Julia actually died um, because of her role as a physician. So there is in 1833, this massive cholera epidemic. It was rampant. People would, would die almost immediately on being exposed to the disease. And it was quite a tragedy when Choctaw Academy had a number of students who were victims. Julia nursed other students and enslaved people um, for about a month. And then she herself finally got cholera and passed away in early June of 1833. I feel like Richard himself becomes a much more unhappy person after Julia dies. Because even though he becomes vice president after Julia dies, there's a lot more darkness and negativity after she dies as well. Racism becomes worse over time. These sectional divides in the decades leading up to the Civil War are becoming stronger. And so what we see over time, especially as Johnson becomes a national political candidate, is the politicization of that family relationship. There's uh, pamphlets and broadsides and cartoons denigrating her and denigrating her daughters and you know humiliating Richard and his family in order to make a mockery of their life together to try and make sure that he and Martin Van Buren don't get elected. The Southern delegates declined to support Richard M. Johnson because of his racial associations. He became vice president, but there was considerable antagonism about him personally that became evident in the American press. But by that time, the mood of the American people had changed from acceptance of relationships between black and white people to antagonism towards them. It challenges some of our most basic assumptions about history during that period and about the history of Kentucky. That's really what, what's lost by, by erasing the people who lived at this place. She was a mother, she was a partner, she was a wife, she was, she ran Choctaw Academy. She was a nurse, she was a member of a church. She ran that plantation, she was the mistress of Blue Spring Farm. She did so much. And I just think it's just so important that we bring her back front and center to the story because without her, none of these stories are complete.